So let's move on to multiple linear regression. Now simple linear regression can easily be extended in Python to include multiple features. So instead of beta 0 plus beta 1 x, we build an equation which consists of multiple variables now. So it will still have the intercept beta 0, but it will have multiple features, namely beta 1 x1, beta 2 x2, and so on till beta n x n, assuming you have n variables. Each of these x's, x1, x2, x3, up to xn, represents a different feature, and each feature has its own coefficient. So in this case, the way this equation will turn out to be in our example will be y, which is the sales, to be equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 times the TV advertising spend plus beta 2 times the radio advertising spend plus beta 3 times the newspaper advertising spend. So let's estimate the coefficients for our wholesome model. Now again, as usual in stats models, we have to specify the latex equation and that's all that is going to change. So the sales tilde TV plus radio plus newspaper, because in this case, we are interested in doing multiple linear regression. So if we plot out or if we print out the parameters again, we see that newspaper has a negative value. So it actually goes to show that or the data is actually telling us that the more you spend on newspaper, the lesser your sales is. So newspaper is not turning out to be a very effective marketing channel. And if we do the same thing on scikit-learn, this time in the feature underscore calls, we specify TV, radio, and newspaper to be our three features, subset that out from Pandas data frame, put that into an output X, pluck out the sales value and put it into Y, initialize the linear regression object, fit the model, and then look at the intercept and coefficients. And scikit-learn has the exact same thing to say, where it's confirming that newspaper as a coefficient is actually giving us negative values. So if we actually want to see the names along with their respective coefficients, we can zip those features together and display it like this. So in this case, how do we interpret coefficients? For a given amount of radio and newspaper ad spending, an increase of $1,000 in TV ad spending is associated with an increase in sales of 45.765 widgets. So a lot of the information we have been reviewing piece by piece is available in the stats models summary output. So all I have to do is call the summary method and each of the individual metrics that we have been analyzing. So we pulled out the intercept, we pulled out the coefficients, we've been trying and look at, uh, we tried looking at the R squared. All of that in a consolidated report, along with the p-values, is present in stats model summary. Take a thorough look on what each of these things mean and try to take a call on how to improve this model. What are some of the key takeaways out of this? You can see that TV and radio have significant p-values, whereas newspaper does not. So if I look at the p-value of newspaper, it actually gives me a p-value of 0.86. So that 0.86 is actually the probability that the null hypothesis is true. And the null hypothesis, if I just scroll up, is just a statement which says there is no relationship between a particular feature and its corresponding sales. So having a high p-value for newspaper confirms the null hypothesis and we can actually say that newspaper does not have much of an impact on the sales. TV and radio ad spending are both positively associated with sales, whereas newspaper ad spending is very slightly negatively associated with sales, just as we pointed out before. However, this is irrelevant since we have failed to reject the null hypothesis for newspaper. 
So we are going to embrace the null hypothesis and say that newspaper is not a very significant variable. This model has a higher R squared, which is a value of 0.897 than our previous simple linear regression model, which means that the model provides a better fit to the data than a model that only includes TV. So that's how we interpret the summary characteristics of the stats models.